Hello. Today I will tell you about German-French surface-to-air missile system, Roland. Depending on the chassis, you might find German names for this system, such as Flaric Peace and Flaric Rad. Roland turned out not to be the most successful system, it underwent continuous improvements over the years, but eventually lost out to other air defense systems, some of which were developed simultaneously. Ultimately, Roland was retired from service. I'll cover the history of the Roland SAM system, the versions that were created, their capabilities, and why the United States initially placed some hope in this system but eventually decided to abandon it. Before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click like. It helps make our content better. Let's burn! The 1960s were a dynamic time for the development of various air defense systems, not just in Europe. These included both solo projects and collaborative efforts between multiple countries. Roland was no exception. Franco-German cooperation in this field began in 1962, initially focusing on the development of the Milan anti-tank missile system. The French company Nord Aviation teamed up with the German company Messerschmitt Bolko Blom to create Euromissile Company, a joint venture responsible for designing the Milan anti-tank missile and the entire system. This same company would later work on the Roland missile system and oversee the development of the entire project. However, before embarking on this joint venture, each country was working on its individual air defense projects. In France, development on the Crotal missile system began in 1964. Meanwhile, in Germany, efforts in the 1960s focused on the well-known Jeopard self-propelled anti-aircraft gun. The Cold War, however, demanded that multiple air defense concepts be explored simultaneously. Both France and Germany recognized that collaborating on a joint air defense system would be faster and more cost-effective. Early in the 1960s, both nations considered using existing or future armored vehicles as platforms for a new air defense system. The goal was to design a missile capable of engaging low-flying aerial targets at short ranges. The idea was to create a short-range air defense system that could protect troops on the move and safeguard strategic sites. In 1963, discussions began between the two countries about the possibility of such a joint development. By 1964, an agreement was signed to initiate work on a short-range surface-to-air missile system, which was named Roland. The joint venture Euromissile became responsible for this project. The development process took more than 10 years, due to a combination of both objective and subjective challenges. The choice of chassis for the new system was one of the early decisions in the Roland project. In France, work on the AMX-30 main battle tank was nearing completion, and the French decided that the Roland system would be best mounted on the AMX-30 chassis. The Crotal system would later also use this chassis. In Germany, development of the Martyr Infantry Fighting Vehicle was underway, and the Germans saw it as the ideal platform for Roland. However, a far more challenging issue than the choice of chassis was the design of the anti-aircraft missile and its guidance system. The system needed to be highly resistant to electronic interference, and the missile itself had to meet the same standard. The first prototype was sent for testing in 1968, but the results were disappointing. Both France and Germany were dissatisfied. The missile failed to reach targets at the required distance. It used a radio command guidance system, meaning that the operator had to keep the target in sight throughout the missile's flight. This dependence on direct line of sight made the system unusable in poor weather or nighttime conditions, and it lacked resistance to electronic jamming. In response, a decision was made in the same year to develop an all-weather version of the system, designated Roland II, while the original version was named Roland I. Germany immediately decided to abandon Roland I and committed to adopting only Roland II. France, however, opted to proceed with both versions. A revised version of the system was sent for testing in 1973, with trials lasting about a year. Both versions were evaluated. In 1974, France placed a pre-production order for nine Roland I systems on the AMX-30 chassis and 240 missiles, with deliveries planned for 1976. After further testing in the French army, Roland I was officially adopted in France in 1977. Meanwhile, work continued on the all-weather Roland II system, which required an additional year of refinement. Germany adopted Roland II in 1978, while France followed suit in 1981. Returning to 1974, after both versions of Roland had passed testing and demonstrated good results, the system caught the attention of the United States. The US decided that the all-weather Roland II could enhance its air defense capabilities and purchased a license for production. 
The U.S. Department of Defense signed a contract with Hughes and Boeing to develop the system under the designation XMIM-115, adapting it to an American platform. Initially, the chosen chassis was the tracked platform of the M109 Paladin self-propelled howitzer. However, the project required the development of a new target detection radar, a tracking radar, and improvements to the system's resistance to jamming. Later, a decision was made to switch from the M109 chassis to the M812A1 truck platform. The first XMIM-115A prototype was sent for testing in 1978, but it did not fully meet the requirements set by the U.S. military. In 1979, a low-rate production order was placed, aiming to produce a single battery and 600 missiles. This would allow further testing within the U.S. Army. At the same time, however, the U.S. was advancing the development of the MIM-104 Patriot missile system, which was adopted in the early 1980s. In 1991, the U.S. cancelled the Roland program in favor of the Patriot. Roland was never operational in the U.S., and the X in its XMIM-115 designation was never removed. It remained a prototype, the sole battery produced was handed over to the U.S. National Guard but was ultimately decommissioned in 1988 without ever being used. In Europe, however, Roland enjoyed significantly greater success. By 1988, the third version, Roland III, had been developed and was later refined several times, including updates to the missiles. Roland systems were successfully exported to countries like Iraq, Qatar, Spain, Nigeria, Brazil, Venezuela, and Argentina. Germany retired the Roland system in 2005, followed by France a few years later. A total of 650 Roland systems across three versions and more than 25,000 missiles were produced. Germany received 143 Roland II systems on Martyr chassis, designated Flarek piece in Germany, and 115 Roland III systems on Man truck chassis, designated Flarek rad in Germany. In France, the third version of Roland was mounted on a towed trailer transported to positions by ACMAT trucks. France operated over 200 units of the system in total, the largest export customer of the Roland system was Iraq, which received around 120 Roland systems. Regarding its military use, Roland participated in three major conflicts, Iraq employed the Roland systems in 1991 and 2003, while Argentina used them during the Falklands War. Today, this system remains in storage in some countries, but overall, it has been replaced and decommissioned without ever being fully utilized. This was the history of this air defense system. Now, let's delve into its capabilities in more detail. The Roland 1 surface-to-air missile system used by France was mounted on the chassis of the AMX-30 main battle tank. At the center of the chassis is a turret that can rotate 360 degrees, equipped with a pulse Doppler target detection radar. This turret houses the operator's station, which includes an optical sight. Additional features include an infrared tracker, a radio command transmission station for the missile, a guidance system computer, a radar transmitter and receiver for target detection, a radio station, control equipment, a launch control panel, an identification friend or foe system, and a power supply unit. On either side of the turret are launchers, each holding a single missile launch container. The chassis also contains a drum-type magazine on each side, housing an additional four missile containers per side. This setup allows the system to carry and deploy up to 10 missiles. The total weight of the Roland system is approximately 35 tons. Its crew consists of three members, a driver, a commander, and a weapons operator. The vehicle can travel at a maximum speed of 70 km per hour, with a fuel tank capacity of 650 liters and an operational range of 500 km. The search radar rotates at 60 revolutions per minute and can detect targets at distances of up to 16 kilometers, flying at altitudes up to 3 kilometers. It is capable of tracking targets moving at speeds of up to 500 meters per second. However, the Roland system cannot fire while on the move, it must be stationary. When the Roland system reaches its position, the radar antenna is deployed. Targets appear on the commander's circular overview display, and the commander selects one. The system can only engage one target at a time, the commander aligns the marker with the target's position on the screen, prompting the turret to automatically turn toward the target. Next, the operator uses the optical sight, which offers 6 and 12 magnification, to visually locate the target and track it by aligning the sight's crosshairs with the target. The infrared tracker, integrated into the sight, 
measures angular discrepancies between the missile and the optical axis of the sight as the operator keeps the crosshairs on the target. The infrared tracker automatically follows the missile's tracer and sends data to the guidance computer. The system then generates commands that are transmitted to the missile via the radio command station, guiding it toward the target. The operator keeps the target in sight until the missile hits. The missile can engage targets flying at speeds of up to 440 meters per second, at altitudes of up to 5,500 meters, and at a maximum range of 6,300 meters. However, the probability of hitting a target with a single missile does not exceed 0.25. When a missile strikes its target, the system undergoes a reloading process. The launch containers are ejected to the side, the launchers are lowered, and a new missile container is retrieved from the magazine. This process takes approximately 9 to 10 seconds, after which the system is ready to engage another target. The missile is designed with a conventional aerodynamic layout. Wings are located at its center and remain folded while inside the launch container. The missile weighs 65 kilograms, while the total weight with the launch container is 82 kilograms. It is equipped with both a booster and a sustainer engine. The booster operates for 1.7 seconds, accelerating the missile to a speed of 500 meters per second. Then the sustainer engine takes over, operating for 13 seconds and increasing the missile's maximum speed to 560 meters per second. The missile is 2,400 millimeters long with a diameter of 160 millimeters. The missile is armed with a shaped charge fragmentation warhead weighing 6.5 kilograms, containing 3.5 kilograms of explosive material. It features both a contact fuse and a proximity fuse, which detonates at a distance of 4 meters from the target. Upon detonation, the warhead produces a cloud of 65 fragments, dispersing within a radius of 5 meters. If the missile fails to hit its target, it self-destructs once all its fuel is burned. Alternatively, the operator can manually initiate self-destruction. As mentioned earlier, Roland 1 could only operate effectively in good weather, as the operator needed a clear visual of the target. Tracking targets in adverse weather conditions proved challenging, leading to the development of the second version, designed to address these limitations. The second version of the Roland system was the most popular among all three iterations. In Germany, it was mounted on the Martyr IFV chassis, while in France, it remained on the AMX-30 tank chassis. The primary improvement in this version was the inclusion of a target tracking radar. This upgrade provided three guidance modes, manual, automatic, and combined. Manual mode, this was essentially the same as in Roland 1, where the operator used optical sight and infrared tracking to guide the missile visually. Automatic mode, in this mode, operator intervention was not required. The commander would designate the target, the turret would automatically turn toward it, and the target tracking radar would lock on. Once the radar acquired the target, the system would launch the missile and automatically generate guidance commands without further human input. The missile used in this version was the same as in Roland 1. Combined mode, this mode allowed the operator to take control of guidance during a specific phase of the missile's flight, enabling manual tracking of the target while the missile was en route. This approach was particularly effective under conditions of strong signal jamming or when electronic warfare systems were in operation. The inclusion of a target tracking radar significantly improved the system's performance, making it more versatile and capable of engaging targets in a broader range of operational scenarios, including those with poor visibility or heavy electronic countermeasures. The third version of the Roland system, introduced in 1988, was a significantly improved air defense system compared to its predecessors. It's worth noting that in Germany, this version was mounted on man truck chassis, while in France, it was placed on a trailer towed by ACMAT truck. A notable feature of this version was the standalone launcher, named Roland Carroll, which included the magazine, radars, and operator station. Weighing 8.3 tons, it could be used in a stationary setup without a chassis and was transportable by cargo aircraft, trailers, or other vehicles to operational positions. The missile's weight increased to 75 kilograms, or 95 kilograms with the launch container. It featured an improved warhead weighing 9.2 kilograms, containing 5 kilograms of explosive material. The enhanced fragmentation warhead produced more fragments traveling at higher speeds, increasing the effective damage radius to 8 meters. Both the contact and proximity fuses were upgraded. The sustainer engine and booster were also improved, 
with the missile achieving a maximum speed of 675 meters per second on the cruise stage. It could engage targets at a maximum range of 8 kilometers and an altitude of 6 kilometers. In the 1990s, the VT-1 missile, originally developed for the Krotal NG system, was adapted for use with the Roland. Weighing 76 kilograms with a 13 kilograms warhead, the VT-1 could engage targets at ranges up to 11 kilometers and altitudes up to 9 kilometers. Roland 3 was equipped with an upgraded target acquisition and tracking radar, offering better resistance to electronic countermeasures. In the 1990s, the Roland M3S version was introduced in France with further radar enhancements, improved internal systems, and greater ECM resistance. The radar could detect targets at distances of up to 25 kilometers and altitudes of up to 9 kilometers, while the tracking radar could lock onto targets at a maximum distance of 20 kilometers. In the late 1990s, Germany began developing the Roland NDV version, equivalent to France's M3S. Planned upgrades included advanced displays, a modern fire control system, and improved ECM resistance. However, testing was only completed in 2003, and by that time, Germany decided to decommission the Roland system, a process finalized in 2005. As a result, this version never entered service. Military technology enthusiasts continue to debate the merits of the Roland system. If it were used in the current era dominated by drones, it might be judged differently. However, Roland was a product of its time, and its deployment was limited by the circumstances of its era. That concludes the history of the Roland Air Defense System. I hope you found this overview interesting and informative. Don't forget to click like and subscribe to the channel. Peaceful skies to you all. Goodbye.